Hi there, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a virtual machine running Windows 10. Okay, what we need to do is if you head over to Google and type in VirtualBox and you'll see this website here, virtualbox.org. If you click on the download link and then here, Windows Hosts, if we want to download this package. This package is going to take a couple of minutes to run. Uh, what this application is, is this will enable us to run uh, virtual machines on our system. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to give it uh, some settings for Windows 10. We're going to download the Windows 10 ISO and then we're going to install uh, Windows 10 into this uh, virtual machine. So as we can see here, uh, the file is 168 megabytes in size so it might take a couple of minutes to download depending on your internet speed uh, my internet speed is fairly quick so it's actually downloaded quite quickly as soon as the file has downloaded if you just left click on it which will start the installer Okay, on the first screen, next, uh, all options are uh, enabled, which is what we want. So click next again. And you can leave these ticked or untick them, depending on your preference. Uh, I'm just going to leave them as default. If you get a prompt here, click yes. Okay, it needs to install a device driver here, which is why we're getting a prompt. Uh, so if you get this prompt, just click install. Okay, install's done. We're now going to click, uh, if you tick the box and click finish, it's now going to launch the application. So this is what the main page looks like. Uh, your VMs will be, or virtual machines will be listed here. Um, obviously we've just installed this, so there's none there. So you can actually add as many uh, virtual machines as your hardware will support. So if we just click on new, we're gonna call this Windows 10. Now here, machine folder, this is where it's going to um, copy the files to for this uh, virtual machine. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got enough free space. So here I've got 133 gig free, which is more than enough. I think for Windows 10, you need probably minimum of 30, maybe 40 uh, gig. Uh, but you can see here I've got plenty. Um, I've also got another drive there, which I could put it on. Um, I'm just going to leave it as default. And here you can select, you can put any operating system on here that's in this list. So I'm going to put Windows 10 and okay there's no 64-bit option uh, it's not a problem we can just leave it 32-bit so if we click next so this is how much uh, memory you want to allocate uh, to the machine so I've got 8 gig of memory installed in my system if I go to the performance tab here you can see that I'm currently using 2.7 gig so I'm actually going to give 4 gig um, because Windows 10 would require at least 4 gig so if I'm yep so I've just selected 4 gig if we click next so here create a virtual hard disk now because this is a brand new VM it's the first one that we've created we need to create a virtual disk uh, you could actually use an existing one so maybe you've deleted the vm by mistake you could actually go back in and reattach it uh, but we want to create a, a brand new vm uh, it's recommended to choose the top one vdi virtual disk image so we're going to have it dynamically allocated uh, you could do a fixed size so the file uh, that you create will be um, what you create so if you create a 40 gig um, disk it will use up 40 gig of space dynamically allocated it means uh, the, the file will 
will just be as big as what the files are that you copy to it. So we're going to leave it as default here. It's recommended because we've selected Windows 10. It gives you the re Windows 10 uh, recommended settings here. It's put 50 gigs. So I'm just going to leave it like that. If we actually go to this location, we can actually see the files that are being created. So at the moment it's empty. So if I just put it down there. And there we go, we've got a Windows 10 machine. Um, as we can see here, because it's blank, there's nothing there. Um, at the moment, it's only got a two meg file. It's probably got some config in there for that um, virtual machine. That's why it's so small. So now we're, what, what we need to do is to get the Windows 10 install media. So if you head over to Google and type in Windows 10 ISO, and if you click on the first link here, what we're going to do is click on download tool. So we're going to use this tool uh, to create media for installing Windows 10. Okay, on the first screen of the tool, click on Accept, uh, then click on Create Installation Media. Don't select Upgrade This PC. Uh, click Next. Um, you can let the uh, defaults be used, or you can select. I'm going to actually, because it's a virtual machine, I'm just going to put 32 uh, bit. So select the options you want, and then click Next. Um, you can create a bootable USB drive or because it's a virtual machine, we're actually going to create an ISO file. So if you just click next, uh, just going to save it to my desktop at the moment. I'm going to call it Windows 10, not just Windows. So we know exactly what the file is. OK, it's going to take a while to download. I think it's about two and a half gig uh, it needs to download. So it's going to take uh, some some time. So I'm just going to pause the video while it's doing it. OK, the ISO file is now downloaded. So if we just have a look at the desktop, uh, we can see the Windows 10 ISO is there and it's 2.69 gig in size. Uh, it, just in case you didn't know, what you can do is you can actually right click on that and do, where is it? Okay, if you open it, uh, sorry, because I've got, got WinRAR in, installed, it's actually override the settings. Uh, but what you could do with an ISO is just right click on it and click on uh, burn to disk. And you can actually put a DVD drive into your system and burn the ISO to that. It'll create um, a bootable DVD drive. OK, so we're now finished with this tool, so we can close this browser down. Uh, what we need to do is map that ISO to this Windows 10 machine. So if we go into settings and then go to, then if you click the storage tab on the left hand side, if you click on the um, plus on the left hand side with the circle, click choose disk. And if you click on the add, uh, go to the desktop or wherever you save the file, just double click on the file, uh, highlight it here, click choose and then OK. And if you just double click on the uh, virtual machine that we created, it will power it on. And it should boot to that ISO. Yep, looks like it is.
Okay, so at the first screen, uh, just select what you want, uh, your language and region, and click Next, and click on Install Now. Okay, if you've got a Windows 10 product key, enter it here. If not, just click on I do not have a product key. Uh, what you can do here is install Windows 10 uh, and it will have an evaluation license which, he, which lasts for, I think it's 90 days. So yeah, just I accept and next. Uh, I'm just gonna do a custom install here. Uh, that's the drive that we created. You can see there it's 50 gig. So I'm just going to click next. Okay, it's now going to copy the files and install the operating system. So again, I'm just going to pause the video while it's doing that. Okay, the Windows 10 install process is now finished and we've now come to a wizard asking us a couple of questions. So select your region and click yes. Uh, we can see down the bottom here that the um, hard disk for this Windows 10 virtual machine uh, is using 6.2 gigs worth of uh, disk space. Okay, it's now asking for keyboard layout, so I need the U United Kingdom. Uh, I do not want to add a second keyboard layout, so just clip, uh, click skip. Okay, we're now being asked what account we want to use to sign into Windows 10. You can use an online Microsoft account, or what I prefer to do here is just use an offline account. So what we can do here is we can enter our username and password so we can set it to anything we want okay sign in with microsoft instead no okay so here just type in your name or whatever you want the uh, username to be so click uh, my name is jason so i'm just putting in jason click next type in a password and click next again okay some security name uh, sorry security questions so fill out one and click next Okay, obviously just making up the answers there. Uh, if we look on the right hand side, uh, my, as you can see my CPU is going quite high. Um, it's because of this Windows 10 virtual machine. Uh, my memory has shot up, I think it was what 2.8, 2.9 before it's now shot up to 6.3. Okay, so let's just click no on here. That, or activity history okay I'm going to decline that okay I don't want to use speech recognition uh, I don't want to let them track me uh, I don't want to use find my device uh, just going to do basic diagnostics. Okay, don't want tailored experiences. Oh, they really, do, they really do ask you a lot of questions here. Okay, so as I said before, you can have as many virtual machines running on your system as you would like. Um, in my system, as we saw earlier, I've only got four cores, four CPU cores. Uh, you can actually allocate more than four cores to your machine, uh, but be aware if one of your VMs uses 100% of the CPU, uh, 
uh, the other VMs won't be able to use any CPU because obviously your systems run out of CPU. So you can, as I said, over allocate. So I can um, allocate say eight or 10 cores, uh, but just be careful because if one VM does have a CPU spike, it's gonna affect all VMs. Um, in an ideal world, you would not allocate more physical cores that are available. Uh, so for example, on some servers, they'll have 32, 64, maybe 128 cores. Uh, in that environment, you would then be able to properly spin up VMs and not over allocate CPU. Uh, but on here, this is actually uh, on my desktop machine. Uh, don't have so many cores, so you just have to be very careful. But this is perfect if you want to spin up a lab where you want to have maybe some domain controllers, maybe some sort of application servers, SQL servers. Uh, this setup is perfect just to test it, uh, just to learn, just to, yeah, just to play about with Windows. Uh, it's not restricted to Windows 10. You can put whatever version of Windows or Linux or whatever you want onto these, onto this virtual environment. Okay, and there we go, it's now booted to the Windows 10 desktop. Uh, just another little tip for you here, if you do have multiple uh, virtual machines and one of the virtual machines is using up a lot of CPU or a lot of memory, what you could actually do is, if you open up Task Manager and if you go to um, the Processes tab, we can see here that we've got two virtual boxes uh, processes. So if you do the top one, you can see that this is like the core um, of the application. Uh, if, you, if you expand this one, you can actually see here that this Windows 10, so this virtual box that we're running, this will show you what uh, CPU it's using. So let's actually have a look at the task manager here. Okay, so we can see it's using 100% CPU. Here it's saying, or is it at 28? That's because this is using one CPU core. Uh, this machine, which is my local machine, which has got four cores, so that is about right. Uh, if this machine had four cores, it's probably going to be saying it's using 100% of the CPU there. So that's just a quick way that you can see uh, which VM is using all the resources and how much memory is it using. So it's using. 112 meg okay that doesn't quite okay maybe it's uh, using some of the hard disk as memory okay uh, that's the end of the video if you have any questions on this process that I've just shown you please post it in a comment below uh, and I'll be able to help you out if you need help uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video